What's going on YouTube and welcome back to another video. Today is the day for season two and with that comes a bunch of new balance changes and the patch notes are now out. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over all of the season two changes and going over the entire patch notes for you guys. We're also gonna be giving out another battle pass in today's video. So just all you need to do is be subscribed, like the video and leave a comment down below. Kamiyano was the last battle pass winner. So if you guys wanna be like him, just go ahead and complete all of those and you'll be entered to win. We'll also be live today on Twitch, streaming some season two gameplay. So you guys can check me out there and let's go ahead and hop right into the video. All right, so I feel like we've gone over Ramatra enough. Um, you guys should probably already know what he does by now. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with Doomfist. Um, there is a ton of changes for Doomfist especially to his rocket punch uh some of which that i can't actually like i'm just not going to go over all of them because there's just so many of them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to have them on screen um but just know that his rocket punch is incredibly good now it's really strong uh and the combos for him are way better um his rocket punch has received crazy changes so we're to the point where that like even the cooldown is shorter um and on top of that his alt now also empowers his punch kind of like the block does uh because normally you had to kind of uh get the block to get your punch empowered but now you don't have to do that so as you can see here come down hot your punch is empowered boom pop them and you can see it does big damage uh doomfist they're already saying is going to be a problem this season they're saying that he's it's going to be like Pretty much doomfist meta um so yeah it, it's gonna be kind of crazy to see how it turns out and as you can see that his health that he's gained from all that damage is is massive i don't know if you guys are noticing that on there um but that's because the maximum amount health that he can gain now has been increased as well uh due to his passive what else they also uh changed his block time his block time has now been increased and the cooldown has also been decreased and the amount of damage required uh that he needs to mitigate in order to empower his punch has been decreased from 90 to 80. um and yeah so the temporary health game that he gets from his abilities has increased from uh 150 to 200 so now he can go all the way up to 650 hp if you guys haven't noticed uh kind of show you right there yeah so he goes up to 650 and he gains 30 he gains 40 hp now uh from each ability instead of the initial 30 so he's he's gonna be kind of a problem he's gonna be very 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 tanky now so that's gonna be kind of nice all right so junker queen has also received uh quite a bit of changes but not like too too many uh so first of all her hitbox has been increased from on her torso and her headshot by about 12 percent uh which will make it a lot easier for her to hit which is kind of a weird change in my opinion considering her health is already so low uh but to compensate for that they reduced the cooldown on her shout by from 14 seconds or from 15 to 14 seconds now um so you will be able to have shout up for five seconds and it's going to be on a 14 second cooldown so you have about like nine seconds in between um so maybe that'll kind of help with that what they also did is they buffed her passive um which i'm going to show here in a second is that her passive now is going to heal her more and uh the wound duration on her alt has also been decreased and but the cost to get it has been reduced so she'll get her alt faster uh, so as you see when i alt after this bot dies right here you're going to see how much health she's going to gain now because of her passive bleed effect uh so here we go you can see her health goes almost instantly all the way back up because she's just doing so much damage uh, for any of you guys who don't know uh her bleed any of her abilities that she lands causes bleed even her melee causes bleed which will ultimately heal her in the same process and as i said shout has been kind of buffed um i think they're worried about buffing it too much because it also gives allies shield too so that's probably what they're kind of worried about with her okay now onto bastion so his the main thing with bastion is his ult got a buff um if you guys watched my previous video this is exactly what i predicted would happen is that he would get a buff um because he's he's really like he's annoying people hate him from overwatch one but uh he's really just not that good and maybe this will change that i'm not really sure but the delay from his projectiles on his ultimate has been reduced uh, by about 40%. So now instead of at one second, it'll launch. It'll launch at 0.6 seconds. Uh, the explosive damage has been also reduced, though. So it goes from 300 to 250 now. Um, and he no longer does damage to himself in the minimum delay 
uh, between placing the shots has also been reduced by 20 percent uh so if you see right here during his alts you know about right there see if i can hit any, either of these two you see how it, it, it definitely launches faster so you might be able to land those a lot better now um they also buffed his sentry form um so as you'll see here i'm gonna just kind of burn this out real quick uh it, it has a 10 second cooldown now instead of 12. you're gonna see bastion in his turret form a little bit more now because of that all right now onto the change that everyone wants to see the most sojourn now sojourn's weird because they like nerfed her and buffed her it's it's weird um so just for to show what i mean by nerfed and buffed he can't ha she can't one shot you anymore i believe this does 195 damage because the the headshot multiplier has been reduced from 2 to 1.5 um i mean it did 130 before half of 130 uh it should still oh no wait 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 that's yeah that's 65 so it does 195 to the head now um so that is a huge change you can no longer one shot you if you're you know a squishy unless she's done damage she just had to hit you once um but what they did is they also made her railgun charge more per, per primary which they also buffed the primary from nine damage to ten damage so each bullet now does ten damage and it charges her railgun faster now um so as you can see one mag normally wasn't going to give you that much charge but now it does uh so what it's going to do is make it so where basically the combo will be to you know uh get them weak and then go for headshots which you can you know pretty easily do um they've also changed the charge time so where you can't hold it as long right so it was eight seconds now it's five and as you can see it's going to start reducing all the way down to zero um until you do damage in between there but it, she now can't hold it as long so that's good that's huge that's big um the damage fall off has been reduced from 70 to 40 meters now so she can't just snipe you from you know quite some ways away you, Widowmakers don't have to really worry about it as much but it still can you know mess you up if they hit you in the body still um or even even still in the head it, it it doesn't matter because she gets it faster now so she can do it more to you now so it's gonna be kind of interesting um and i believe that's it oh yeah the overclock charge rate has been increased by 20 percent. so uh if you go in here you'll see she now charges it faster so basically when you're playing with her now you're gonna want to you know try to pepper them up and yeah go for the charge shots so she she got nerfed and buffed kind of at the same time uh she she's gonna feel like she's in the same place if you've already played her um for the most part she's just not gonna be able to one shot like a like an ana or a kiriko or zenyatta that's in the back line uh like she was able to do previously all right now symmetra also got a few changes uh the charge rate and decay rate have been increased by 20 percent um, so if you guys didn't know, you can see your charge rate on your gun. Um, there's that little, uh, triangular thing on there. Um, basically you can see how much is charged by the amount of indicators on there. So three indicators on the gun means that it is charged up all the way. Uh, so when one drops, now you're half charge, as, as you can see, and then another one drops and boom, you're, you're no longer charged anymore. Um, but it charges up faster now. So it means that she's going to be able to fry you a lot more and it also decays slower now so she can hold it a little bit longer now so she's gonna be kind of dangerous up close um and even you know using her this her primary is still gonna be really strong so or her secondary i mean but yeah those are kind of the changes that they made the biggest change that they made to her though is that whenever she damages shields now her gun is also going to regain ammo uh like it used to in overwatch one they've added that back now um and they changed the ammo consumption rate from seven to ten per second um so yeah i, I that's gonna be kind of interesting see how that works but either way she looks like she's gonna be a little bit better but i'm not sure if that'll put her inside of being meta all right now chaser only received a slight change um but it is kind of big so they got rid of her bug so she now can't fry you from light years away anymore no, that bug doesn't exist anymore. But if you can notice, the amount of damage I did to her is, is kind of significant uh, from that range because what they did is they increased her damage from five seconds to six seconds. So now he has one mag potential 
on body shots. I don't think she had that before. At least when I was playing her, it didn't seem like she did. You had to really aim for the head because the, the damage just was like so abysmal that you had to hit headshots in order to one mag. Now you can one mag in the body. So if they're already, you know, kind of hurt, it's going to it's going to be pretty substantial damage uh, that you're going to be able to dish out with Chaser. And then if you incorporate even just just a few headshots, you're like guaranteeing one mags with her. So Tracer's is definitely going to be really viable now. She already kind of was and, and now she definitely is. All right. Now on for grandma. Uh, as they stated in one of their statements before, they wanted to make supports more uh, viable on their own. They wanted to make it so where they if they got dove on, they weren't just entirely helpless. Um, it's kind of weird, though, because the change that they made doesn't really re reflect that. The only change that they made for Ana is they decrease the sleep dart from 15 to 14 seconds. So um, if you see here, it's now 14 seconds instead of 15. Uh, maybe it's honestly because if you watch my previous video, I already think Ana is just so good already. Um, she can duel you like if you jump on her, right? Like she just has to hit fire you and she's going to hit you three times and you die. So if you can't kill her first, she's definitely gonna kill you. Plus she has nade, which already does that much. And then right there, she just has to two tap you. So we'll, we'll definitely see how she plays, but she definitely did get a, a slight buff. All right, now on to Kiriko. So basically, um, she got the same same treatment as Sojourn. and she got nerfed and buffed. Um, so we're gonna talk about Kitsune last because that's the, the biggest one. Uh, but her ammo has been increased on her primary. So she did have 12 and now she has 15. Again, they're trying to make them more self-reliant. Um, so she can now kind of, you know, fight you without, if you dive on her or if you she even needs to jump on you, um, you don't have to worry about being as defenseless now because you have three extra shots. And as Kiriko, you're always supposed to be aiming for the head because she only does 40 to the body, but has a three X headshot multiplier. So it allows you to, to two shot. Her Suzu also got buffed. So previously Suzu would only, uh, it would detonate and kind of have like a short delay on it. Um, uh, uh, to be exact, it was uh, 0.15 seconds. And now it's 0.1. So as I throw this, you can see that it detonates sooner. You'll see when you play in game that you're gonna notice that it's gonna detonate sooner. It may not be able to, you might not be able to notice here, but I definitely can see that it does happen faster now. Uh, even th though it is, you know, 0.05 seconds, it, it, it seems like it makes a difference. Uh, you can also now hold gift for swift step. I'm not really sure why that matters as much, but uh, you definitely can do that now. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see, how, to see how that'll work. But yeah, they also added a setting. So if you go into options, you go to change hero, you click Kiriko, and right here, they have automatically climb walls. You can turn this on if you want. I'm not really sure if that's something you want to have on. But I don't main her, so I wouldn't know. But they did give this an option now, so you can have this on or off if you want. It defaults to off. Lastly, her ult. Um, so yeah, so let's go over here with her ult. With her ultimate, they added a lot of changes. So the ultimate cost has been increased. So now it's going to be 10% harder for you to unlock her ultimate. Uh, the movement speed bonus has, has gone from 50% bonus to 30% bonus. And the cooldown rate on your skills, on your abilities, have also gone from three times to two times. Um... So you're only going to get them twice as fast instead of three times as fast now. So we're going to use Kitsune here. And you can see that you can heal faster. I, I attack faster, obviously. Heal, attack. You can definitely see the movement is different. 100% movement is different. I, I don't feel as fast. Um, and this is a big deal because of, of DPS, which, by the way, what they did with DPS is they got rid of their elimination movement speed bonus. So previously, DPS was used to get... I believe it's like a 25% movement speed bonus. They don't get that anymore. Um, so yeah, it, what it, what they would do with DPSers is while they were in this ultimate, they would not only have the speed buff from, from Kitsune, but they would also on eliminations move even faster, which would make it easier for you to just int people. And now you just can't do that. So yeah, uh, Kiriko is, is definitely uh, still really good. Uh, she's still in that, uh, you know, S tier conversation in my opinion just because of her ult alone and suzu um but they did definitely nerf her uh so hopefully we'll see how that you know messes with the meta all right lastly we've got mercy so uh mercy received some changes but really only like very abysmal ones they changed her weapon swap speed 
um, from 0.5 to 0.35 seconds. This seems super negligible, um, but I don't play Mercy, so I wouldn't know, but it, it just doesn't really seem like that should be really like the thing. Um, also, what they did is they gave her an ammo buff. So she used to have 20 rounds and now she has 25. Uh, so now you can fight a little bit better to defend yourself, uh, which again, as I was saying earlier, goes along with their statement where they wanted it. So where um, you could be able to defend yourself as a support player. But I don't really see that really happening that much unless Mercy's in her battle mercy mode anyway, which it, at that state, she has fucking infinite ammo anyway, right? So we'll, we'll have to see. I don't really think that it, this makes a huge difference for Mercy. But you guys who play Mercy would be, have to be the ones to decide on that one. But that's pretty much all the buffs and nerfs that they gave all the heroes. Uh, lastly, let's just go over, over a few more changes that they did make. Okay, so for control, uh, they made a slight change to the way that it works uh, in regards to overtime. So, <clears throat> so if Team A was at previously at 99% and Team B takes it from them, Team A is still at 99%, right? Now, if Team A comes in and takes the point back from team b what used to happen is the game would just end instantly and players thought that was pretty anticlimactic and also just kind of unfair um so now what it does is when team a retakes that point it'll initiate overtime so now it, the timer will start immediately and it'll give team b a chance to run up and touch point before the round actually ends <clears throat> and then at that point if they're able to take it back team a doesn't win and they and, and, it, and the game continues on um, so this is definitely going to make control a lot more, in my opinion, competitive, in, which is going to be kind of great. <clears throat> for competitive play, uh, what they did is they added titles uh, that will last for one season for add will last for the the following season is the best way to explain it. Um, but if you played Apex, basically consider it as pre trails or just trails in general, that trails would only last for the next season. And then at that point, they would be gone. So now the way that uh, in, in this game, the way that works is if you hit top 500 in season one in season two, you'll be able to use that top 500 uh, title, but you won't be able to use it in season three. Um, so that will be kind of cool. They've also added uh, improved matchmaking for groups, which the way that that reads to me is that if you're solo queuing, you're less likely to go up against groups, which is pretty much how every game should be. If you're solo queuing, you shouldn't be going up against a group because it's pretty unfair, um, in my opinion. But it, that's neither here nor there. They also added uh, polished inf improvements to the competitive play U UI flow. I'm not really sure what that means, but I think that's maybe just behind the scene changes that they've made to the ranked, which in my opinion are needed. And lastly, where Matra will not be available in competitive for uh, two weeks. This is going to be a trend that they follow for every new hero that they add to the game. It, it kind of is necessary. So this is what they'll be doing for the next two weeks. Lastly, <clears throat> As I stated earlier, for the damage roll passive, it did get removed, but they also buffed the reload speed passive. So now whenever damage players get an elimination, the reload speed will be increased uh, by 35% instead of the previous 25%. Um, so this is a, a pretty nice change. And lastly, like I said, Ramacha is a new hero. I, again, I've already gone over him enough. I don't really need to beat that dead horse, but... I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like on it. And if you want to see more Overwatch content, smash that sub button, guys. We've been really popping off on the channel lately, and I, and I appreciate you guys, all of you guys, for showing the support on the channel. And good luck on the Battle Pass giveaway. I uh, hope you win. Uh, I know I'm not going to be able to say that to all of you because all of you can't win. But um, again, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.